Okay, it is Monday, October 16th at six o'clock. I'm calling to order the Ad Hoc Sustainability and Resilience Committee. We right now are a little light on committee members. It's Mr. Freyer and myself, but we'll um, note when other people join us. Um, the first thing to do is public participation. Katie, is there anybody waiting? There is one person who is here with the public. And if they'd like to speak, they should raise their hand and Katie can allow them to unmute themselves and make any comments on agenda items that they would like. Not raising their hand. She has not raised her hand. Okay, great. Then we're going to move forward. We can't approve the minutes because we don't have a quorum, but let's move right on to business. And that would be Brian Bedoli to speak about the climate action plan and the GHG inventory project. Yeah, great. Thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone. I just wanted to give you a quick update on where we're at um, with the sustainability and resilience plan and also the GHG inventory that we added on to that project. So uh, in terms of the climate resilience plan, we're about 70% through. Uh, we're going to be having a municipal uh, capacity building workshop with internal staff um, at, towards the end of this month. And basically what that is, is really the meat of the, the, the plan, how we've been developing all you know the list of projects, doing a gap analysis and kind of figuring out where we stand. This workshop is really to go sort of in depth on a project by project basis around some priorities with um, you know, staff to figure out uh, how best to get things, you know, obviously these things done and how to align an organizational structure around that. So that'll be sort of the last piece of the planning work. And then we'll be going into the drafting phase and we should be having a draft probably closer to the, um, the first of the year. So we're still on track with schedule. Um, the one thing that is going might delay it slightly, but we've been working on concurrently is the GHG inventory. Um, one of the things that we found is that a GHG inventory is going to be important for us to have in terms of how we do performance monitoring and monitor, monitoring our performance on the climate action plan moving forward. So that's a three month scope. It's a pretty intensive data collection exercise that we've been undertaking with the consultant. Um, but we will be uh, keeping you up to date on that and look forward to delivering it towards the first of the year. So I'm happy yeah, to take any questions. People, could you just give a little bit more of an outline about what GHG is just more for our audience because sometimes we use these letters. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, of course. So the greenhouse gas inventory is what that stands for. And effectively, what we're trying to do is to get a handle on the current baseline of emissions, um, obviously CO2 or greenhouse gas emissions that are affecting the environment, obviously trying to figure out, you know, what Norwalk is doing, how we're contributing, and how we could help, you know, work to mitigate those impacts. So in terms of the actual analysis itself, a lot of it's data gathering. What we're doing is kind of going through, you know, looking at transportation indicators, waste, uh, a number of things that we'd be happy to share from our consultants. It's a large, you know, comprehensive data gathering exercise. And then what they do is they put it into their system. They're going to project out what our current impact is, but then also take a look at the climate action plan, the projects that are included, and talk about how that will be reducing that. So this is something that we're going to want to keep track of moving forward. And I think it's a, it's a good thing to have locally. You know, a lot, not a lot of communities, particularly the Norwalk side, are doing this, but it's definitely an important performance monitoring tool. Yeah, it's a super good baseline, right, for like um, everything we do going forward. Exactly. It's a good, and, yeah, great measure. And are we only measuring what the city um, GHG impact is, or is it just the city as a whole? Like just what, are, are you just looking at what city operations, I mean to say? It's the city as a whole. So it's not just city, exactly. city okay. side staff or city operations, yeah. Oh, good. That's amazing. That's amazing. So three months, so we're thinking like at the turn of the year, we're going to hear more about this? Yeah, I'm trying to get it teamed up with the uh, the climate action plan, but it's just going to see it's a lot of people that we're depending on to get this data. So we're tracking them all down uh, and then the modeling will begin, but I'm trying for the first of the year. Wow, so cool. Can't wait. Well, that'll be an interesting one. Um, then we're going to get the whole, I, I would love to bring it to the whole council, um, you know, report about both um, projects. Okay, yeah, we'll definitely plan on that. We can get the consultant to do a whole presentation, go over it. Yeah, just as a report type of thing. Fantastic. Thank you, Brian. Yep, thanks. Okay, so now something that I've been waiting a year for, I'm so excited, is the tree inventory project. So um, we're going to turn that over to Ken and Robert. And Jess is here, but um, I think she's counting on Robert and Ken speaking mostly about it. Thanks, guys. I agree. Oh, and by, I should mention that um, Josh Goldstein joined the meeting about five minutes ago, but that's a couple minutes later. Am, am I able to share my screen? Yes, Katie can do that for you. You should be able to. Let me know if um, you can't, can't hear me because uh, my audio sometimes goes uh, in and out. So let me know. 
We can hear, <clears throat> hear you right now. Yeah, and we can definitely see the shared screen. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. Just give me one second to set the slideshow. Can you get a bigger cam on that? Is that a full screen? Okay. Okay, there you go. <clears throat> okay. okay. As most of you know, um, um, uh, there was a committee that um, met and um, developed a uh, RFP and uh, a scope of work and was passed around and uh, for um, this particular project, which it really is a project to develop a, a master plan uh, for uh, to guide us uh, in our goals, our key inventory, our tree canopy goals. Um, and we selected, we had two, <clears throat> uh, two bidders and we select, ended up selecting uh, Planet Geo. And um, I can say they've been doing a tremendous job. Um, and, um, you know, our budget wasn't very large. And so, um, of course, our second bidder was um, quite a bit higher. Um, almost half a million dollars, I believe. Um, and we were fortunate enough to get uh, Planet Geo for considerably under that, um, uh, around, um, and Jessica can, uh, can um, correct me, but I think around 175,000, somewhere around there. So um, they're doing a tremendous job and me and Ken are going to go through a PowerPoint with you and um, uh, kind of try and describe at a high level of what what is um, what we're doing and what we've accomplished so far and where we have to go. <clears throat> but uh, first of all, I just wanted to, as everybody knows everybody here, I believe, um, introductions, of course, me and Ken work for the Parks Department. I'm the director. He is the superintendent of uh, Parks and Public Spaces, and I'm basically my, uh, the department's deputy. And so we want to go through this. Um, we've been working really closely together on this. Although uh, when we get to the really meat of the situation, um, Ken um, uh, is probably the lead project uh, manager on this one. We are um, we are also um, interviewing a. Um, we're going to be selecting an arborist, horticulturalist, uh, arboriculturalist. Um, um, probably uh, coming to work within the next, before the end of the month. And so this, this person will be uh, our top advisor on this this master plan with, with Ken. Besides, they have, they'll be having other duties as well. But uh, uh, consulting team <clears throat> overview, uh, uh, Planet Geo is really responsible uh, in the RFP for, the scope of work is really for um, it, it, it's several phases. The first phase, of course, was really data collection. And they wanted to, they had to collect the data that we already ha had on file. They worked a lot with Lindsay King. She has a lot of the data um, uh, that we presently have. And they they were able to look at different uh, levels, uh, at different uh, segments of, of, uh, of Norwalk. And you'll see later on what I'm talking about. <clears throat> but, um, so besides the tree inventory and canopy analysis uh, and the data collection, um, the mapping, geospatial map, map, mapping and analysis is included, and uh, tree inventory assessment was uh, part of their uh, responsibility as well. All, all this uh, data collection and, and information we're going to put in together uh, uh, an urban forestry master plan. Excuse me a minute. I'm I'm having a terrible time hearing what Robert's saying. Mm -hmm. Does anybody else have the same problem? I can hear him okay, but it is a little um it's a little fuzzy. While I have a moment, I'm gonna mention that Barbara Smith joined us at 607. I'll try and talk a little Jim. Can you hear me now? I'll talk a little louder. That's a little bit better, yes. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> okay. I'll talk a little louder. Anyway, uh, we're going to our agenda um, that we're proposing here. And um, so again, uh, the tree inventory and canopy analysis, um, 
was a big part of this uh, initial um, phase. Our kickoff really went, our process really had a kickoff of our project team. And our project team consisted of um, myself, um, Ken Yu, Chris Torrey, who has been the forestry uh, person, um, uh, Alexis, Alexis um, uh, Tira Cheetah, and then um, James uh, Travers, uh, Chris Torrey, as I stated before, and also Jessica was on our first couple of meetings. Um, we've had several project updates. Um, two, two updates with the project team. Um, one update with um, Jessica um, and the chief of staff, uh, chief of uh, the mayor's chief of staff, uh, Mr. Livingston, and also Vanessa uh, Valderas has had an update. Um, we also, I also gave an update and a briefing to the Tree Advisory Council um, on this project. <clears throat> So, so far, after the kickoff, we um, entered into um, a phase of, like, like I stated, data collection and um, the, the, the tree inventory. Part of the tree inventory was um, um, composed with, we had a canopy uh, software called Tree Plotter that was um, installed in order to keep up with the um, tree inventory and uh, the space, the spatial, uh, the geospatial mapping. Um, so we now currently have that tree plotter in, installed and is being used right now to, to uh, designate areas where we should be planting trees. And so we do have um, funds to plant trees that we've had and we have a, a contract um, with Olmstead. And so uh, along with engineering, um, um, and Lindsay uh, assisting us and also Ken Hughes, we're placing trees right now based upon the tree, tree plotter. And Ken will uh, talk about that more. This all will lead to, like I said, a tree planting plan, a uh, maintenance plan, and a tree master plan. <clears throat> so I'll let Ken explain a little bit about the tree plotter. Thank you. So this is actually, this is the fun part of the project. So um, every point you see here is a data point of a tree that boots on the ground actually noted on their iPads and it was transitioned over to the tree plotter software. So if you can see on, on the right pane, it basically tells all the types of trees that were found in South Norwalk. They also did Veterans Park and then Calf Pasture Beach. Um, when the software is live, you're able to click on each one of these data points. It tells you the size of the tree, the health of the tree, whether or not there are any work orders associated with the tree, basically a history of that tree, which in terms of maintenance is invaluable. Um, you know, so we can go back to any one of these trees uh, to see what type of work order was placed, whether it was losing branches, whether it was struck by a car. <clears throat> so, you know, that's great for us in terms of maintaining our existing uh, tree canopy. They, uh, Planet Geo was very impressed with the variety of trees that we had in our urban center. They said typically in the urban core, you don't see the variety of trees, and I'll show you later on the slide of what they uh, of what they found. So they took uh, 4,355 data points. Out of those, 4,190 were trees, and they also designated 165 planting sites for us. Um, uh, Paul Sonic and myself already are planning the fall planting list, and we actually use those data points to dictate and to guide where we're planting on new trees. So this is, you know, this is real data and it's going to have a real effect on the city's tree canopy. So you can see in the, uh, in the pie graph, uh, the most common tree species that are in the city, um, Norway maple, red maple, varieties, plain tree, maple, honey locust, calorie pear, flowering dogwood, and other trees, 47%. So they were very impressed with the variety of trees that we actually had in the city. Um, one of the things that I was impressed with off this data was the condition of our public trees. If you look in the top right, you can see, uh, what is that, almost 60, 90% of our trees are in excellent or good condition, which I think is a testament to the work that the departments have done in terms of uh, tree canopy maintenance. Um, one of the good things about the data is we can also highlight trees that are high priority that need to be removed or pruned. 
so we can actually guide our, our tree pruning uh, program, especially with the arborists that we have coming on board that Robert, uh, Robert talked about. So this, this story right here basically tells us the value of trees. Um, you know, each, each tree, you know, in terms of air quality, filters out about 2,500 pounds of pollutants, you know, reduces stormwater, sequesters CO2, and it also has a total value in and of itself. And these data points are all on the map. So when you click one of the trees, based on the age of the tree, it figures out the total value of that tree, the amount of pollutant is removed from the environment. So as I said prior, the, the data is just invaluable. And, and we're just kind of gleaning the top of the, the surface right now of what this, uh, what this program can do. So based on the mapping that was already accomplished in the South Norwalk area, we can determine the uh, health of the tree canopy. So as you can see up on the, the graph, uh, the lighter color is 5% all the way up to 74, 75%, uh, you know, heading north. So this is where we really need to focus our tree planting efforts in order to, you know, to up the canopy. So we're no longer, you know, blindly planting trees. We actually have a focus now of, of where in the city uh, you know, needs canopy. And, you know, as I said prior, this is something I would like to do, you know, citywide. This is just a, a separate map showing, you know, like the heat zones based on lack of canopy. Um, you know, we can massage the data to, to basically show any type of metric, metrics you want. We could do it by population. We could do it uh, by taxing district. Here's just some more data on the existing tree canopy cover. So Ken, can we go back to that slide that you just had? The one that was up. So total unsuitable area, 36%. Bummer, right? So um, is that just paved areas or like where those tree stumps are that we were talking about? Like on Yeah, it's, it's, e it's either paved areas or um, areas between sidewalk and road, which is not wide enough for a tree. So any any spot where you think a tree should go there, but for some reason it's unsuitable. Yeah, and can is there like mapping of where that unsuitable stuff is? Is there a map that you know kind of shows us? Like, is there other ways? There to is. Yep, we don't have it on this slide deck, but it shows uh, we can show impervious surfaces, which are a lot of the unsuitable areas. Um, so yes, we can show those. Yeah. So like, is there a thinking that? You know, if we have like lots of impervious surfaces and lots of parking lots in a certain area of town, is there any way we could start to think about maybe putting islands of trees and parking lots and things like that, even though it looks like it's unsuitable? Is there ways to address it? I mean, do they make any recommendations like that? Yeah, I mean, I mean, there always is, you know, obviously after the fact, it's going to take a bit more money than doing it in the planning stages. But there, right. there's always ways, you know, for, for workarounds. Absolutely. Yeah, I think part of the master plan is really to determine you know, holistically, comprehensively, what we need to do to achieve our um, canopy uh, coverage goals. And so that could include what you're saying, Lisa. And, and in fact, we'll, we'll, we'll uh, make a point at talking to the consultant about, um, you know, the viability of doing that to also increase our uh, tree canopy. Yeah, because it seems like, you know, parking lots get repaid from time to time or, you know, mm -hmm. taking so we just have it like marked that, hey, mm -hmm. next time you do something, maybe we can add little strips mm -hmm. of tree islands. Yeah. Robert, you want to take over, Robert? Yeah. Um, let me see. Uh, <clears throat> so um, this is our the scope of our RFP. This is a recap of the scope. Inventory analysis, of course, you just heard that. Um, uh, we are establishing go some goals and objectives in the master plan that you'll 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 see as we go along with this presentation. <clears throat> um, the phase three is the assessment of the frame, uh, framework, and then the management plan, and then finally the planning plan, which will really guide us to be uh, scientific about where we plant trees. Um, and then uh, as we go along, there'll probably be other products and deliverables because. As you, many of you know, we've um, uh, been awarded a million dollar grant uh, based upon the work we're doing now, based upon uh, doing this master plan, based upon the plantings that we've done. Um, 
uh, you know, the state has seen um, uh, fit from the federal government to give us a million dollar grant to continue this project. Um, as I stated, we only had a mere measly 170, 79,000 to get this thing going. Now we have a million dollars to continue it upon, um, besides the money we actually getting capital to plant trees. So um, it, it's, it, we really, really need a holistic master plan that, that determines comprehensively um, what we should be doing. <clears throat> you know, we were, the, we were just at a national conference on parks and recreation, which um, on the last day I attended a session on um, a tree master planning. And, um, you know, it's very important. I know we, we're not dealing with the private so much in this um, in this phase of our project, but it's very important that we do um, try to uh, come up with a plan to also include uh, private trees in, in our canopy assessment. So we'll we'll be talking about how we can do that. <clears throat> Here's kind of the status of the project right now. Um, as you can see, the green. Uh, is the completed um, uh, task and the tasks that are in pro progress is in the yellow and the um, and the tax the tactics and um, tasks that are not started are in the salmon color and we see that it, uh, our existing inventory review has been completed our tree inventory our tree canopy assessment and then we've installed the tree plotter uh, inventory software. Um, we've, we've done some training and there's a training manual that we, we're, we're reviewing right now and we'll, we'll um, give them input on that, but it's drafted. And, um, and then our final data summary we have. Um, and then um, and we have uh, the tree benefits that you saw uh, in, and we have a report on that, ordinance and document reviews. So they've turned in already some reports that we need to review. And we and, and so we'll review those and then we'll be look, looking for input um, internally from, um, uh, from, from uh, uh, city uh, staff and uh, so probably from, from, the, um, from your committee as well. <clears throat> in, the, in the yellow, can, can you go back to the yellow? In the yellow, we still have uh, some short, uh, long-term canopy inventory goals, and <clears throat> in a, and we'll show you an example of that. But I, you know, I'm reminded of this um, working with our climate action plan in Seattle, and, and the goals we set here in terms of the inventory should be consistent with uh, our climate action uh, goals as well. So, so we want to plan those goals together and, and how much we want to accomplish and when we can accomplish in the timeline so that it's part of uh, the climate action plan as well. So um, we still have also, um, they're working on the staff and stakeholder surveys. And um, so we're looking at that benchmarking. We still have looking at our tree equity score. So they're working on that. And so you can see the rest of the, uh, in the yellow, what what needs to, what they're working on. And then there still are some things that they haven't began yet. So um, this is just a status. Um, we can we can also give this um, uh, PowerPoint to, to the committee as well. So, <clears throat> so this is, um, this is as we go on in this uh, project, we, we, it's our, it's kind of our, we're kind of up, up the bat to give them information now. And some of the information we're working on and we can use your help is the final list of the internal stakeholders for surveys and, and, uh, and some of the remote meetings that we're going to have in the community. A draft list of external stakeholders that are important to this process. So we'll need some input. Um, from this committee and from uh, you know, the mayor's office and uh, also um, from other departments. Um, so the consideration for canopy goals and planning strategies, we also uh, need to get together with uh, um, people that are formulating the, um, 
climate action plan and set some goals. The final list of internal stakeholders for survey and remote meetings. Um, of course, the purpose is to identify work, work, workflows, roles, and shared um, priorities. Um, and, and so we'll need this list to participate in our online surveys. Uh, so we'll, we'll need some input from your committee. Um, they have drafted a preliminary survey. And um, so we are looking at that and um, uh, trying to uh, see if we need to uh, give them any more input. Can you share that with us? The um, Going back to like the, the initial survey, can you just share it with us for purposes of just curiosity and maybe input? <laughs> Yeah, we can share it with you. That'd be great. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, um, once we um, review um, the reports that we've gotten from them, uh, we'll share those with you too for input. So be great. Mm -hmm. And then the external stakeholders, the same kind of purpose, need, and timing uh, will affect that as well. So these are things we have to uh, do to go forward. Um, and you can help us by. Um, in these draft group categories, we're looking for um, input from these particular um, categories of, 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 of folks. Um, it'd be helpful to get all these categories, but we need to get as many as we can. So you can help us with names, um, you know, association, organizations. You can help us with that. So if you send us this list, um, mm -hmm. okay, taking away at some people who fill those categories. Okay. So this is just another um, consideration for our goals, um, the planning strategy. This is kind of an example of um, of what we're talking about. It's not, it's not, um, you know, real time. It's not us. But here's some examples where you see um, a ten year plan where um, they're looking to go from 2019 to 2032 from 39.4 percent coverage to 40 almost 41% uh, coverage with planting 18, uh, over 18,500 total trees. And you see another example here from 25 to, to 2050, where they go from, um, you know, uh, the existing uh, 20 to 20% to the 30% um, canopy coverage. Uh, so these are some examples of, of um, what our timeline will look uh, will look like, um, um, and and it'll take both um, our staff and the consultants because they're they're experts at this to to come up with um, a reasonable plan, a reasonable achievable um, um, timeline. And a okay. question about that slide, Robert, that I'm looking at. So it says that mm -hmm. I mean, it's just an example, or mm -hmm. does it really take 25 years to increase your tree canopy by 10 percent? I think it depends on how 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 large your um, square miles are <laughs> in your city. I know um, in Seattle we started what we call the Green Partnership, and it's a regional um, effort to restore 2,500 acres of, of forest. And we started this in um, 20 what did we say 2001 uh, somewhere around there. And we're supposed to be finished in 2025. So um, wow. we're supposed to be finished by next year. We're making pretty good progress on it before I left. So hopefully um, they're going to complete it. It just seems glacial. <laughs> <laughs> I think it depends on how big you're, you know, what you're talking about, really. Um, yeah. So um, here's the timeline so far um, our deliverables. Um, the, the the initial deliverables have been delivered, and that's the data and the and the inventory assessment. Um, and then we're working on our goals and objectives, and then we got um, three more phases. But if you can see that they're not they're not going by phase by phase. You can see in the status where we had the the yellows that were um, they were working on the salmon that they hadn't started yet, and the green that they had completed. You can see that they're working in all the phases at the, at, uh, simultaneously. So, um, so uh, I think we've made pretty good progress. 
So here's uh, some some work for an ad hoc uh, sustainability committee again uh, task. Uh, we're going to um, be inviting you to give us an input on uh, on the yeah, survey um, stakeholders and uh, survey. Um, we're going to be working with you and probably the climate action team to set some canopy goals. Um, and also, we have uh, existing um, draft reports that we need to review. And then, um, kind of, uh, what our what our final um, master plan, uh, what the framework, what what should look like. So, so any questions? No, well, there's a lot. We can you go back to that? Can you go back to that slide where you're looking for our help? And I just want to like um, ferret out a little bit more information about what you're looking okay. from us. So um, one of the Is things, that that, cool? that, there we go, oops. You to go over that. So while you're scrolling through, um, the canopy assessment goals, so we'd love to be helpful on that, but um, I guess we need to know what the baseline is. And um, yeah. I, it'd be great to hear from experts to tell us, you know, mm -hmm. just having looked at that one thing where I said it was glacial progress over 25 years, you only got 5% more canopy. Um, so how will we be informed about that? Like, will we have your expert help? Would we have the, the consultant's expert help about giving us ideas about how we ought to be thinking about it? And yeah, the, they'll give us some at the end of the day. Yeah, they will. They will give us some guidance and some some baselines and what is in, in the industry, what, um, you know, what the norms are. They'll, they'll give us all that. But um, they're going to rely on us to actually um, you know, set our goal. Um, but they will give us they will give us a lot of help on that. They're gonna give us their expert opinion. Um, and even after we set the goals, they're gonna give us their expert opinion of, of whether or not it's it's a norm. So we're gonna have lots of help on that. And do we have a sense? Because right now we're just mostly looking at, you know, kind of district B, right? About what the canopy is there. I mean, South Norwalk has always been the place we've been most worried about because the canopy was thinnest there. So do they have a coverage right now? Do they have a number that they say that canopy is and what, you know, their suggested goal would be? I, I think our uh, it's around 38 or 30. What about Kim? You, you, you talked about. That. Yeah, I mean, in the South Norwalk area, it goes every, anywhere from 5% up to 38 or so percent. Yeah, 38%. I'm just going to get out of the slide deck for a second. Mm -hmm. yeah. But they, but they are, um, you know, they're going to give us their guidance that in terms of what a normal, if you look at a city our size, square by square miles, what in fact the canopy coverage uh, should be and in terms of the population and that. They're going to give us that. And they, but we're going to be responsible for setting the actual goals of what we can achieve. Wow. What so this is achieve. the slide that shows us how the canopy, what the canopy coverage in South Norwalk is, right? Correct. So it looks like 5% is not is it's it's there's a lot of five percenters mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so we and have a, look, we, can, we can go to each census block within the district which tells you the tree can't be percent so here you can see it's four percent wow i guess it's pretty easy to determine that south norwalk's the focus right well the whole city's the focus that we want to i mean it, it's been our focus in this particular project because that's where the need is and and we want to plan, plan the master plan on an equity basis, but I think the the overall ongoing project is to try and get our tree canopy um, to where uh, for our population, our tree canopy all over the city is adequate. Yeah, it feels as though in other districts, according to that map that Ken had up just a minute ago, a lot of the other, I mean, what's a general goal like thirty to forty percent is pretty good, right? Correct. Yeah. So Lisa, here's the type of data we can glean from a tree a data point. So you can see the trees they mark, um, you know, it shows the DBH, it shows the address of the tree, it shows the current condition, the common name. And then you can also go down, um, this links up to the city work system through the city. So anytime any type of maintenance is done in that tree, it'll log it into this system. You know, That's and awesome. you can get any types of details you want from that tree. Each tree has an ID number. Oh, great. 
So one of the things for um, the whole committee, DBH is the um, diameter at breast height, right? Um, Correct. So that's kind of like the standard way that one measures a tree and um, little trees, you know, obviously the two to three. So um, it's really important. That was one of the things we did in our um, ordinance was to protect trees of um, large DBH. So one other question I saw, uh, well, I, I have one other question I'm going to turn over to my committee and then I'll ask more questions, but I saw something about an ordinance review. Did they look at our um, ordinance? Did they have suggestions about how to improve it? We're all ears. Well, I, I'm just going by what I know about uh, this and, uh, and, and also um, what we talked about in the session at, at the national conference. And really, you know, um, as we set goals and standards, we should really make them into to, to an ordinance or whatever uh, resolutions or ordinances. They should be, um, you know, something that can be enforced. Um, and so, you know, um, so there is there is going to be recommendations on um, on how to do that and, and what kind of ordinances that we need to protect the trees. Um, they will give us some recommendations on that. That would be great. One of the things that we compromised on when we were writing the tree ordinance was we made it only really for public properties and you know, for new construction, but um, we felt as though going on private property was going to be a harder, um, harder thing to sell. But we would be all ears about any changes that they want to suggest. Mm -hmm. Do yeah. any committee yeah. members have questions for Robert or Ken? Uh, yeah, I had one question. Um, are, are, is this going? Obviously, this is going to be continued because it seems like this whole sections. Where I don't, where I don't see any, um, any indication like East Norwalk that we're looking at right now on this picture, mm -hmm. is is that we just haven't gotten to East Norwalk yet? Well, this this particular um, project, we we only did uh, inventory for four thousand, a little over four thousand trees. However, with the with the million dollar grant we just got, we're projecting that we can we can do. Um, I think I think we were projecting we could probably do twelve thousand more, and so um, and I'm I'm hoping that you know we applied for two and a half million, and we got a million. So we we told them in the in the um, grant that we were having a five year program, and then it was a match grant. So I'm thinking that they gave us enough for the first couple of years. And I think, you know, usually when they invest in these things, they'll continue to invest as long as money's there. So mm -hmm. I'm thinking that we could probably do another, um, I think I, I said something like, if we can get another uh, million from them, we could probably finish this project and just about inventory our our, um, our total uh, tree canopy. But yeah, we're going to continue, Jane. We're, we're going to continue. Um, is, there, is there any, is there any, uh, priority that you're going to give it. For example, if I'm looking at this, mm -hmm. it looks like if I look at the sixth taxing district, it looks like there's a, a quite a few trees. But if I look at over in East Norwalk, I see less trees. Yeah, where where there's going to be less trees and population, of course, we're like, we're we're looking at South Norwalk as a priority, but there's other places as well. Um, but like I said, if we're going to have a really comprehensive master plan. A master plan is supposed to be a master plan. It's not supposed to be right. a, a segmented a kind of plan. And even when we're talking about private trees, um, I think we just have to determine how we do that. And you know, who's going to be responsible for private trees? I know in some of the mun municipalities around the country, the, the, the department that's responsible for land use is responsible for uh, permitting new construction or house renovations or you know, where you go to get a permit to do changes in your house or or to build a home. Uh, in most municipalities, they're making that department responsible for uh, private trees. And, and that means permitting the trees. Mm -hmm. They want to be cut down. They have to go to that department. Um, the department keeps the inventory. So what I'm saying is that we, we have to, I think, um, that we would be best suited to, as we continue to get the, the, these monies, um, particularly from the federal government and that we have a real uh, comprehensive master plan. So, yeah. so Robert, in that vein, where would you go next? Like if you're doing this piecemeal, because you have to, because of funding. So where's your next target area to 
inventory? I think we continue with the inventory where um, I, we haven't picked out the next one yet, but but wherever there is, you know, in terms of equity, we're going to follow an equity uh, kind of uh, pattern. Um, but we have this million dollars, so we're going to do as much inventory as we can. But also in the million dollars, what we, what we need to do is we need to maintain our fees too. I mean, it, it, even though we had 90%, you know, good and excellent trees, we still have 10% of the trees that are failing. Some of them are dead. And so in in the in the um in the funding, we're going to put together um two uh, a, a tree crew um uh, to help maintain um what we're what we're uh, contemplating on doing. So uh, well, Lisa, the uh, the areas in the white on the graph show uh, thirty two percent or lower canopy coverage. Gotcha. So if we take it down to nineteen percent or lower, those are the areas in the white. Gotcha. And then five percent or lower areas in the white, which is right down here. So yep. with this with this tree plot, we can really prioritize where we go. Um, yeah. Does anybody else have questions? I have one or two more questions. All right, I've got one or two other questions. So when I was looking at that um, list earlier, it was probably like two slides before this of our species. Um, you know, we're, we definitely want to have species diversity, right? Um, Ken, yeah. that's always the the goal mm -hmm. with things. Yeah. But I saw like we have like twelve percent Norway maples. Aren't those uh -huh. Yes. <laughs> so um, what does that what does that indicate to you in your mind about um, how we ought to be thinking about what we're putting in? in the first place. And are the Norway maples like, is that something we want to take down? Is it like tree of heaven where like they're, you know, they're not a, they're actually a species that's troublesome or are Norway maples just like kind of a bummer that they're not native? So I wouldn't, I wouldn't intentionally plant Norway maples. And I think a lot of these trees that they folk that they uh, collected data on were, were trees that probably grew at, you know, on their own. Um, so I think the city should make a marked decision not to plant Norway maples but frankly, I wouldn't I wouldn't take down existing Norway maples because you're kind of, you know, going against the purpose of this whole exercise to increase your tree canopy. Right. So, you know, and, and as you know, we, we concentrate on on native species now, which is the right thing to do. Uh, so moving forward, you know, that's kind of be our marked, um, you know, way to go. Yeah, because I also saw Japanese maple on there and there's one or two others that were like non um, native. So yeah. Um, it would be really great if we could make our list of recommended trees that were give away just all natives, right? Aren't there, um, did they talk about the baselines of um, how many natives you really want in order to su to support a diversified fauna? Um, they, ha they had that somewhere, I believe. We can, yeah. we can get that number. Yeah, it would be interesting. Percentage. Yeah, because I think that there's some goals of like trying to plant 70 to 80% all natives now mm -hmm. to counterbalance the the non-natives, but it would be interesting for our, this committee to know that so we could be informed. Yeah. That's definitely, that's definitely one of the goals we want to, to, to have, so. How's the tree of heaven? That's like, I see 43 in that list. That's actually mm -hmm. not such a bad number. <laughs> we can actually, you can actually even find where they all are. Let's see, let's see where those rotten trees are. So the tree of heaven, everybody, is the tree that is called an aganthus. Is that right? Um, Atlantis, and... Atlantis. Okay, yeah. And um, that's the one that um, the uh, lantern flies like to yeah, set. Like those. Yep. Oh, hang on, it's lagging a little bit because it's a lot of info. Just give it a second to toggle off. So while Ken's doing that, I have one last question, which is, you know, you're asking us to give you um, groups of people who are good stakeholders. I mean, what are what are some of the attributes of stakeholders that you're looking for a little bit? So we can... That whole list um, had the categories. We're looking for people from different segments and different diverse, uh, um, you know, a diverse uh, population. Um, uh, but what we'll do, we'll develop a kind of a, a form or whatever. We'll send you a package of um what we're what we're looking for so um, we can have that. oh yeah. good we're spread yeah. out but not too many tree of heavens you can see a few at the beach <laughs> as expected yeah not, not too many though could be worse yeah there's about 43. Yeah. great any other questions committee for our panel you're otherwise good 
while we have Josh and Barb and Jim, we now have a quorum so we could vote through the um, two minutes that um, need to be approved. I think we lost Katie somehow or another. It looks like I'm the um, host. So um, thank you, Ken and Robert. That was really helpful. And we're looking for, oh, Katie's back. Um, I'm here. Yeah, I kept losing. So you may have been become the host. Yeah, we're good now. Um, so anyway, um, Robert and Ken, thank you so much for that presentation. It's so interesting. And thank you. Looking forward to like the next stages and we'll definitely help with getting stakeholders and would love to look at the um the survey as well so that's cool mm -hmm. okay. exciting we'll the Thanks. Uh, presentation as well. all right thank you guys i know that um you were hoping that the um consultants would do it but we appreciate you guys coming <laughs> to <the> <laughs> yeah <laughs> so um now what i'm going to do is move to approve the minutes for may 17th which is a regular meeting so um do i have a motion to approve the me the minutes of may 17th 2023 Barbara and Josh. Okay, Barbara said it. Um, so all in favor? There's three of us. And I think that Jim is um, going to abstain because he wasn't on the committee then. So then the next set of minutes that we're approving is June 8th. Um, a motion for that. Josh, can you approve? Great. Um, and again, I think Jim may need to abstain, but all in favor for the that meeting? Great. So those meetings got passed, Katie. Minutes got passed for those meetings. Great. Well, I promised we were going to be done before seven, and we are. <laughs> so thanks, everybody, for joining and listening on the tree stuff. Good. Thanks. Good night, everyone. Good night. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Good night. Good night.